Another interesting game by Michael Tal, the second game from the book uh, Life and Games of Michael Tal by Michael Tal. And here he plays um, a certain person named Leonov. And he plays this in his first um, big tournament. And he was allowed in despite having not um, a very high rating yet. Um, but he was considered to be very talented, and so he was allowed in. And um, we see immediately that he is very talented from this game, where uh, he opens with e4 and is faced with the Karakhan, an opening that he ironically would state later, um, sort of tongue-in-cheek, Sicilian to draw a Karakhan to win, when he played a very interesting Karakhan game in a must-win situation where everybody expected him to play something very sharp. Um, somebody offers you the center, you take it. And then the point of c6, obviously, is to play d5 and strike in the center. Um, interestingly, Tall does not play the advanced, which is these days a bit more topical, I believe. Um, yet he exchanges and plays uh, the bishop d3 line from the pawn of Bodvinik attack. I think the main line goes with c4, and then when you develop, um, you sort of shut in this light squared bishop uh, behind the pawn chain. And um, either here you play knight f3, um, and continue the game, or my dad's pet line is you shut down the other black bishop and claim that both of these bishops are are poorly placed and you want to keep control of this square at all costs, for example, like this, and just say, you know, uh, you, your your position is, uh, is not particularly good, you're going to have to break down this eventually, but it's unclear how to do it. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to castle, put my rook on the e-file, um, develop a bishop anywhere, I don't know, maybe, de ooh, maybe develop a queen, and maybe start uh, an attack while you are sort of passive on this side. So this is a very annoying system that my dad used to play against me. I dabbled with the Karo Khan, when I started playing chess and I didn't really have a repertoire for black, I still don't really have a repertoire for black. I tried, a, tried many things. I tried the, the pitch and I tried the caro and now I'm playing a Sicilian. But anyway, um, Michel Tal opts for the sort of second pop most popular line and there are very interesting games with that as well. Um, Anyway, the game continues. I think this move is to prevent a bishop from landing there. More or less the same idea here. Bishop f4 is an excellent move, preventing still um, the e4 break, and also later trying to take this square, um, as we see, take, take. And here, c3, Hard to say, but I think that this is a pretty pretty strong structure in the center, pretty stable. Um, it's more of a Sicilian position than a Caro position, to be honest. That's at least my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I'm hardly an expert. Both both guys castle queen e two. Looks like a logical move to me. And rook e8. Um, the computer really doesn't like it. Uh, rook e8, the computer says, is a mistake because now you get exactly what happens in the game. The knight really nicely blockades an e5. It's hard to say where and how that knight can be safely removed without falling into a pretty annoying attack over at the king's side. Um, 
for example, if you take immediately, then this sort of is lost immediately because obviously that is an annoying idea, which I mean is why he played queen c7 in order to be able to take without getting uh, forked. Computer doesn't like that move all too much either, but it's really hard to say what to do in this position. Um, you could try something like this and then the game continues, but um, okay. Queen c7 was played, f4 was played, which is a good move. And then you take, take, and now the knight has to go somewhere. Knight goes to h7. And here the queen was played to h5, which is not a winning move, but I mean, there is some pressure on the c pawn now. Uh, it's only defend it once. Um, it's attack twice. Oh, wait, it's defended twice, but there is some annoying pressure here. Um, personally, I like Morphe style just developing the knight um, better than the immediate queen move. We, we see this again. We have some overprotection going on. Now we place knight a3, which is a mistake. You should play knight d2, but maybe you should have played knight d2 earlier. Uh, knight a3 is not so good because after a6, basically, where's the knight going? Um, you have to play it back. And then he makes it work. Um, queen d7 is a double question mark move. Um, it allows knight e3, which is a really good move. And now he plays queen e8, and we reach the um, position that was included in the book. And I suggest you stop the video. Um, let's, let's do this. Um, maybe I should do these things because you can, you guys can read the notation anyway. Um, I should probably hide the notation somehow. Um, white is obviously better. And the question is how to proceed. Um, I suggest you pause the video and make a move. And then if you really, really want to improve write out your calculation, not just one move, but write out the, the sort of tree of the variations that follows after you suggested a move. Okay, if you have uh, done the exercise, then um, we can go back. And Michal Tal played Rook F6, which is a very interesting move. Tal says it's a blockading sacrifice by which white prevents f5 while threatening rook takes h6. Obviously, um, that rook should not be taken. Um, that rook is, is rather safe out there. Um, I mean, what happens if you take it with the knight? You take it with the pawn, you attack the rook, and if you claim nothing is wrong, you're just going to lose the rook. And if you move the rook um, or take the pawn for obvious reasons, then, I mean, these things happen where the lone h6 pawn is threatened by the knight. Then the queen covers the, the pawn and then you just slide in with the rook really nicely. And uh, I mean, the f pawn is terribly weak. So you have to move it forward in order not to have the rook infiltrate immediately. And then you get the check and the king goes to the only square on the board. And then, you know, it's... black has no moves. Like there's nothing constructive to be done in this position, but to allow the rook to move in. And um, there's not that much to do. If you make a waiting move, like you do nothing, if, if, if you're too slow, then you're just made it with the queen and the knight. And um, if you don't wait and, and you try, try to find something here um, and you come up with something like 
queen g7 in order to prevent you know the the rook from from entering with the check on the g8 square then i mean you don't even have to take the queen immediately you can just slide back the queen and cover the rook and i mean what you're gonna do uh you're gonna you're gonna lose everything here and yeah this is population uh, you ouch town Daniel Wrench style, right? I mean, this is horrible. So if you take with the knight, there's misery. And if you take with the pawn, there's also misery. So, I mean, the rook, rook f6, it's, it's safe. You can't take it. It's a nice blockading square. So, um, Leonov played the queen out to f8. And here... Uh, the idea is that you change the blockading piece, right? You want to get your rook, your knight here, and then your knight over there. Um, computer doesn't really like it. Computer just wants to do this, which makes a lot of sense. Um, just sliding in the last rook after you clear. But I mean that light squared bishop. It's it's hard to to give it up for the poorly placed knight, right? I mean, yeah, it's for a human. I think this is a difficult move to make. I mean, you don't want to exchange pieces when you're attacking. Um, but the point is, you can sacrifice the rook in this position. By the way, if the king doesn't move to g7, let's say g8 is the same idea. And if, if you go here, um, then you can also, I think you can also win it then. Maybe you don't have to take it. Like, I mean, this is a sample variation. Um, yeah, I can still do this. Still do it. I can still do it. And I mean, this this pawn this pawn is gonna cave in. Like it's horrible. And if you don't move the king in this position, and let's say you develop the bishop, then let's see, maybe this. Yeah. In for a penny, in for a pound. Might not be the best move, but Yeah, this is this is pretty much over, right? Take with check, king over here, knight here, king. Oh, this is checkmate. <laughs> All right, so. Already, that is that is very uh, very difficult to defend. Anyway, um, Bishop D seven was played after he removes the rook, and the knight makes logical moves in order to get in because the pressure is mounting and mounting and mounting, and it's really hard to say what you should do. Um, Leonov decides to just you know hold the fort basically, and now. You have the blockading knight with check. Knight takes. Um, yeah, it's really hard to say what to do here. Um, the rook slides away. And now he took the pawn. And the game was over after king takes g7, double question mark. And it was queen a5 check, threatening the rook. 
um, f6 was played and rook was taken with check and it was over. Uh, probably a slightly better defense would be queen takes. Uh, but then you lose the queen for obvious reasons. You can take with the rook. Um, this is with check, obviously. And now you take the pawn, get out of the way of the bishop. Um, and if you take with the king, then you just slide the queen away, threatening a new pawn, and the game is also over. So, again, a very nice combination. Seeing that the square was weak in this position, noticing that uh, it, even though it looks defended with the pawn and the, the coming knight and the bishop and the other rook sliding in, just all of the, the pieces that move around this, this area of the board, this piece is terrible, this piece is terrible, development issues. Noticing that this square is the key square for infiltration, blockading it, making sure that f5 is never going to be possible and the breakout and sort of the defense is, is stopped. I think that is amazing, amazing. This is 1949. Um, is it? Is it three? Is it March 1949? So this was played earlier um, than the first game, apparently. Uh, but again, a very interesting um, combinational tactical. Yeah, just crushing attack on the board by Michael Tal.